Well, if there's anything true about what we do as human beings, it's this. We praise what we enjoy. Hey, everybody, welcome to SAC's online worship experience. So excited you're with us today. If you're new, if it's your first time, we want to welcome you. You're in the right spot. We kick off a new message series today through the book of Psalms. It's basically the first and foremost hymnal of God's people, of the church. It's going to be a blessed time together of prayer, worship, time in God's Word. So let's get ready to do it, everybody. reading from Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the harp. Play to him upon the psaltery and lyre. Sing for him a new song. Sound a fanfare with all your skill upon the trumpet. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made by the breath of his mouth, all the heavenly hosts. He gathers up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin and stores up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to pass. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to naught. 
He thwarts the designs of the peoples, but the Lord's will stands fast forever and the designs of his heart from age to age. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, hey everybody, it happens all the time. You catch a glimpse of a beautiful sunset or an animal uh, in wild nature. Impulsively, you drink it in in admiration. You praise inwardly what you are beholding outwardly. Often, typically in failure, we pull out our iPhones and begin shooting video or taking pictures in hopes that we can share somehow uh, this moment with somebody else who will in turn share with us in praise of the thing or the scene or whatever it was. In our smartphone world of endless and mind-numbing memes, my wife and I, for fun, share some of the more humorous ones with one another. The enjoyment of a meme or a joke in life often comes in sharing it with somebody that we love. In fact, a joke is really not that fun unless you have someone to share it with. Human beings are caught up in the enterprise of praise. We're caught up with appreciation for beauty or for things beautiful, whether it's our kids or our pets or some hobby we're obsessed with. There's something hardwired inside of us that must admire and appreciate and loud. Just the other night, my boys and I were watching an NBA playoff game. It was a back and forth contest and it came down to a dramatic last possession as time was expiring. A shot was hoisted up and it missed and an unlikely putback for the game winner with less than a tenth of a second remaining uh, for the comeback win. It was one of those insanely cool but unlikely sports finishes. We were shouting and jumping around the room like wild men. Uh, you know, it was past midnight, we didn't care. High-fiving and roaring and admiring and praising what we had just witnessed. It was very cool. And we weren't even really fans of either team. But we just saw something. We experienced something that demanded, no, was worthy of our praise. Lowercase praise, lowercase p that is. What is that inside of us? And his great primer on the Christian life called Simply Christian, N.T. Wright describes several universal human desires or longings that are strong and obvious echoes of a divine reality. Things like justice, relationships, spirituality, and beauty. And as N.T. Wright argues, we're, we're wired toward an appreciation of these things because we're wired to find their ultimate source and meaning they are, as he argues, echoes of a greater voice, that is, the voice of God, the reality of God. The problem is that we often stop short of that ultimate source. We deceive ourselves into thinking that something less than God is God or will satisfy in a godlike way, settling like for incomplete injustice or fractured relationships, spiritualities that leave us thirsty, or beauty that does not last. It's the gospel that brings these four longings and every other longing for that matter into redemptive and corrective light. For example, through the gospel, we begin to learn how to think about and work toward and embody God's ultimate justice in an unjust world and how God has ultimately dealt with every injustice, our own injustices included in his son through the cross, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, this is a lengthy setup to a summer message series uh, on the book of Psalms, excerpts from Psalms. Psalms is a compendium of Hebrew poetry written by many authors, compiled as the expression of worship, praise, lament, and prayer by God's people Israel in the Old Testament. The Psalms are like a companion piece, a record of honest worship, as God's people learn to admire and praise and drink in the reality of what it meant to be in relationship to the Lord of hosts. The Psalter uh, is the first authoritative hymnal of Israel and of the church. It's the poetry of the Psalms where we begin to learn the rightful praise of God. It was the great Dutch theologian Herman Bavink who wrote that great theology when we are seeing God that is rightly through the lens of his revealed word. Great theology leads us necessarily to a resultant doxology. Translation, when we see God, when we experience God, when we hear and understand God through his word, then we will worship God. Sometimes we fail to see or to understand what we're witnessing. We've all had that experience when we shared something with someone else who just didn't get it or just didn't see it or didn't want to see it. 
They could not, they would not, they were not able to join you in praise or in celebration of that thing. But the reception of the gospel, a biblical faith, is always accompanied with praise and worship, which is why God's people have always been marked out as a singing people, for example. In the great deliverance from Egypt that we read about in the book of Exodus, the water was still dripping off the fringes of the robes of the Israelites when they crossed the Red Sea, uh, that they burst out into a song of praise to Yahweh, their mighty king. The mighty act of redemption that those Hebrews had experienced in that moment demanded a new song. It demanded a lyrical response and praise and worship. And that's just what they did, of course, before Moses and the nation of Israel, patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob worshiped the Lord, giving thanks and praise to the one who they were discovering was worthy. Psalm 33, our psalm today, uh, though untitled, is attributed to Israel's greatest king, David, uh, and to his authorship. Most of the psalms and books, or chapters 1 through 41, are considered um, to be from his pen. It's a beautiful psalm exhorting our participation in the rightful praise of God. And though the entire psalm builds its case for the reason that we worship, today we only need to look at verse number one, uh, which says, Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise befits the upright. In the message translation of the Bible, Eugene Peterson says it like this, quote, Good people cheer God. Right living people sound best when praising. Right living people sound best when praising. Praise befits you. It's what fits best on those who trust God through the gospel. Praise is an authenticating mark of a follower of Jesus. If you know the love of God in Christ, then praise will be inevitable. In his great work uh, called, in, entitled that is, The Cross of Christ, the late John Stott describes how the death and resurrection of Jesus makes the church a, a community of continual celebration. We keep the feast, the scriptures say, since Jesus, the Lamb of God, has been given as a once-for-all sacrifice. That is, our song never ends. We have something ever and always to sing about. Stott argues that in great contrast to other religions and spiritualities, Christian hope and redemption necessitates the songs of the redeemed and forever praise to the one who set us free. If praise befits Israel in the old covenant, how much more should praise befit new covenant Christ followers who have been forgiven and brought near to God through the blood of Christ? Amazing to think about that. And this psalm in Psalm 33 is a corporate setting. It presumes the gathered assembly. It gives charge to what that experience should look like. We'll just take a peek into verse 2, which says, quote, Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the string with loud shouts, close quote. You get the idea that what the psalmist is calling for here is not a subdued, stoic, stuffy, and cold-hearted time of worship, but rather something ignited with passion, celebration, and feeling. Now it's true that subdued worship could be charged with feeling and deep reverence while outward exuberant worship could be masked uh, through uh, inward insincerity. But praise will always involve deliberate action and praise of the God of inestimable worth should never be despised. No, not ever. I will never forget attending my first worship gatherings as a college student and as a brand new Christian, a brand new believer suddenly finding myself in settings where a couple hundred other college students were passionately engaged in worship, singing, praying, some bowing, some raising their hands, some closing their eyes, some with shouts of exuberant praise. In the first few months of these weekly gatherings, I just took it all in. It was pretty overwhelming. While at the same time, uh, I was hearing God's word taught and explained. I was spending quiet moments uh, with God on my own, reading the Psalms and the New Testament, talking to God, learning to pray, singing some of these new songs that I was hearing at these campus meetings. No one told me to lift my hands or to clap or shout or to kneel or to do anything. But over time, I believe what was happening in my Christian faith is that I was learning how to wear my new gospel streetwear. It was a jacket of praise, a coat of praise, and it began to fit me just right. Eventually, I began to sing out loud. 
at home alone in my quiet moments and in the gatherings of corporate worship among my peers and the broader church uh, assemblies of worship on Sunday mornings. The desire to sing and worship and praise God became so urgent in me. It's what motivated me to uh, finally buy a cheap guitar and learn how to play some of these new worship hymns and songs that were so formative and life-giving uh, at that time. And in case we think that intimate praise in the body of Christ is a modern contrivance, Paul exhorted the church in Ephesus to, quote, be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, close quote. In C.S. Lewis's classic work called Reflections on the Psalms, he dedicates an entire uh, brief chapter to the question of why we should praise God. He explains how early into his Christian life, having been converted to Christian faith as an adult, as an intellectual, and as a serious scholar, and as a committed, functional, and theoretical atheist, he explains that it tripped him up in his early walk with God regarding why God needed to be praised. It wasn't a demand for praise, something only insecure egomaniacs would do. And then it dawns on him that praise is an embedded reality in which humans excitedly participate all the time, all over the world. He writes, quote, But the most obvious fact about praise, whether of God or anything, strangely escaped me. I thought of it in terms of compliment, approval, or the giving of honor. I had never noticed that all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise, uh, unless sometimes even if shyness or the fear of boring others is deliberately brought into, in to check it. He goes on to say, the world rings with praise. Lovers praising their mistresses, readers, their favorite poet, walkers praising the countryside, players praising their favorite game, praise of weather, wines, dishes, actors, motors, horses, colleges, countries, historical personages, children, flowers, mountains, rare stamps, rare beetles, even sometimes politicians or scholars. I had not noticed, Lewis writes, how the humblest and at the same time most balanced and capacious minds praised most, while the cranks, misfits, and malcontents praised least. I had not noticed either that just as men spontaneously praise whatever they value, so they spontaneously urge us to join them in praising it. Isn't she lovely? Wasn't it glorious? Don't you think that magnificent? The psalmists in telling everyone to praise God are doing what all men do when they speak of what they care about, close quote. See, praise is the language of how we speak most passionately about what we care about or what we thought or what we have discovered through the love of Christ, the Lord of all creation, upholding everything by the word of his power and the Lord, our redeemer, who gave up his only son that we might be forgiven and reconciled and who invites us toward intimate friendship with him. You see, praise is not weird. Praise um, is not something, you know, sort of niche. It's what we do. It's not just what silly Christians do. It's what humanity is wired to do and has done from the very beginning of time. The question is not, do we praise or should we praise? Rather, the question might be, who is worthy of our praise? Who is worthy of our highest praise? Who is the object of our highest praise? The Great Westminster Confession of Faith begins with this question and answer. What is the chief end of humanity? The answer, the chief end of humanity is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. When we behold the glory of God, as Paul writes in the face of Jesus, we will experience Him as our highest joy. When we know the Lord rightly as our highest joy, as God Almighty, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer, even as Abba, Father, which Jesus taught us to come to know Him, your praise will not be far behind. Our praise won't be far behind. How could it be? Praise His holy name. Thanks be to God. Amen. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you, our Christ. 
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down the sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a beautiful name it is what a in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, all right, friends, thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today from wherever you're connecting, whenever you're watching this. We're so excited you're here with us, and our prayer for you is simple, the love of Christ over your life, the fullness of his joy in you and your joy in him, leading to more praise to his glorious and wonderful and worthy name. And if this service has been a blessing to you, this online connection, we want to encourage you and invite you to be a digital missionary with us. Push this service link out to a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, um, or to your social feed. We really do appreciate that. And if you're in the Wilmington area, we want to extend an invitation to you. Join us here in person on Sunday morning, 8.30, 10 a.m. are our services kids ministry rocking strong all morning long and at 9 15 it's about bagels coffee community connections great conversations take a chance plan your visit just click the link below and hit sundays and you can learn more about a sunday visit with us at sjc we would love to meet you in person and so many other ways to connect discover and grow in your relationship with jesus just go to our website Click the event hub button. You can explore around so many ways that you can get involved with us. And then finally, we're so grateful for partnership in the body of Christ. As we head into the summer months, uh, we are so excited about the many family and children's ministry initiatives we have going on. So many different camps, vacation Bible schools, adventure camps for older kids. It's going to be an incredible uh, summer of ministry. We're calling it our very best summer and none of it can happen without partnership together, time, treasure, talent coming together in the body of Christ to make a difference in the lives of others. And so thank you for your support um, and your encouragement of this ministry. We appreciate it so very much. You can learn more about giving here at SJC by clicking the giving button on our webpage. Uh, links at the bottom of the screen and learn more about becoming a sustaining giver and a sustaining giving partner with us here at St. John's. May the Lord build in each of us hearts of generosity as we respond to his goodness and his love and his kindness to us in the gospel. May the Lord build in me and you hearts of generosity. God bless you today and your giving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks. For all your goodness and loving kindness. To us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation. Preservation. all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace, and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. 
by giving up ourselves to your service. And by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory. time today in prayer and worship and in God's word. Praise that fits the upright. It's the garment, it's the jacket that we will wear. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 61 says that we will receive a garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. Uh, the relationship between our enjoyment of God through the gospel and our level of praise his wonderful and mighty name is humbling to think about. Is he our highest joy? How much praise are we giving him? Lord, build in us hearts that praise your name. I know that'll be my prayer this week moving forward. I'm sure it'll be yours as well. It's been a joy to connect with you today. We want to stay connected with you. You can find us anywhere and everywhere on social media at S-A-C-I-L-M. Hope that you will give us a follow there and we look forward to connecting with you there and as you go today remember jesus loves you he really really does and friends life is short we don't have much time to glad my heart to those who travel with us so let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind go in peace to love and serve the lord thanks be to god until next time everybody take care